Hello viewers, welcome to this video lecture series on analysis and design of algorithm. In this session, I shall explain you the different asymptotic notations and what are these notations, why are we using it and all these notations I'll be explaining you with an example. So basically why we go for these kind of notations. In my previous session, I have explained you how we determine the behavior of an algorithm. When we plot a graph for a particular algorithm's behavior, we take the time on the y axis and the value for n that is the input value on the x axis and we try to see what type of behavior it is exhibiting. So suppose like in my previous session already I have explained you, we have seen so many uh, different behaviors. Sometimes you can see that your the behavior the algorithm is behaving in this manner fine so we say this is a linear behavior because as the input increases the time to complete the execution of the algorithm also increases so it is a linear behavior sometimes we get a constant behavior also see if it is like this it means what whatever may be the input value you are giving okay whatever may be the n value you are giving the algorithm is taking same amount of time to complete its execution so here like this we will get different types of behavior we can see when we try to plot the graph of time versus n for the different algorithms so how to express this kind of uh, behavior we have certain notations and we call those notations as asymptotic notations so basically there are three types of notations big o notation okay big o notation big omega notation and big theta notation now big O notation you are using the symbol as the uppercase O and for omega notation you are using the symbol as and for theta notation you are using this kind of symbol. Big O notation this is what the uppercase O, omega notation you are going to use this kind of symbol and for theta notation this symbol. Now in this session I am explaining you about the big O notation. To understand the big O notation, I have just written here first in a very simple manner, one sentence, it represents the upper bound running time complexity of an algorithm. So upper bound running time complexity of an algorithm is what when you try to execute an algorithm, you try to see what is the running time of the algorithm. So sometimes what will happen is you are going to see that it, the algorithm is taking maximum amount of time to give the output. This big O notation is representing the upper bound of an algorithm. It's not that it is always uh, used only to represent the worst case time complexity of an algorithm. It can be used to express the best case time complexity. It can be used to express the average case time complexity also similarly for the other two notations omega and theta even those two notations can also be used to express what the worst case best case and average case complexity of an algorithm now at present what is that you have to see you have to know that how are you using this big o notation in expressing the running time of an algorithm now here this is one graph wherein i have shown that it is plotted time versus n n is what the input so input is as the input increases you can see that the algorithm is behaving in this manner this is for some algorithm let us assume that it is having a linear behavior and that uh, this is the function t of n so here i have written t of n is algorithms running time usually indicated by its basic operation count so how we are going to find the value for t of n it all depends on the number of times the basic operation in an algorithm gets executed how to find the basic operation it is the one that is contributing most to the running time of the algorithm so any statement which is inside the loop okay that gets executed many number of times so we say that is the basic operation so that that running time of an algorithm definitely depends on what the count of the basic operation so this is how you got an a linear behavior in this case we are taking one example definitely you need to rank and order the different running times of the algorithm so in order to carry out you need a comparison function how to compare for that you are making use of another function called as g of n okay so here i have written g of n is some simple function to compare the count with look at the definition for the big o notation a function t of n is said to be in o of g of n denoted as t of n belongs to o g of n if t of n is bounded above by some constant multiple of g of n for all large n that is if there exists some positive constant c and some non-negative integer n naught such that t of n is less than or equal to c into g of n for all n greater than or equal to n naught this definition whatever i read you may not be able to understand so for that i'll just make things little simpler as i move on to explain the different points in this topic you will definitely understand this definition 
so you are using a simple function g of n to compare the count with your function is t of n so this t of n should be less than or equal to less than or equal to g of n when multiplied with a constant c so here i have to see that if i am taking some value for this c constant and some value for n the t of n should be always less than or equal to so in the graph if i want to show you that behavior what i have to do is t of n is here less than means c into g of n will fall will be c into g of n will be what above this c bounded above c of, t of n is bounded above so above this t of n you can see c into g of n but when it will happen only when you choose a proper value for the constant c and a proper value for n and one more condition is that c should always be greater than 0 okay greater than 0 it is c equal to you should start from c equal to 1 c equal to 2 and n should be greater than or equal to n naught now n n naught is what that uh, you will understand once i plot that value in the graph and moreover n naught should be greater than 1 okay these three things you just remember c should be greater than 0 n should be greater than or equal to n naught what is n naught i'll be telling you very soon and n naught should be greater than 1 fine so now we'll take one example wherein you can understand this concept very clearly i am just showing you with two examples let me first start with the example one t of n is equal to 2n plus 3 and g of n is equal to n this is the equation t of n less than or equal to c into g of n so what you have to do is in place of t of n you substitute 2n plus 3 less than or equal to g of n what you got what is given n now what value of c and what value of n with this equation will hold good that you need to find out uh, how to find out the value for c basically what is that you have to do is n value you have to start with 1 and c value you have to start with 1 so if we are starting with 1 1 but instead of starting with 1 and checking suppose if it is not working for example you take c equal to 1 only c is 1 means i will be writing here 1 n is 1 so this is 1 into 1 here 2 into 1 plus 3 2 plus 3 5 5 less than or equal to 1 you are getting which is false 5 is not less than 1 so for that reason instead of spending time by uh, for starting c equal to 1 c equal to 2 c equal to 3 you should use your mathematical knowledge in order to just assume a proper value of c suppose now n definitely n there is no other choice you start with one only but with what value of c you can start see if you take if you look here you have here two numbers constants 2 plus 3 5 5 into n already you have selected n value for this will be 5 5 less than or equal to here also if you get at least 5 that means what it will be satisfying 5 equal to 5 so with what value of c you will get 5 if i take c equal to 5 if i take c equal to 5 then i will be able to satisfy this equation so n is 1 2 into 1 plus 3 less than or equal to c is how much 5 n is 1 so what is that you are getting 2 plus 3 5 here 5 is equal to 5 so this is satisfying you got the value you got the equation uh, true if these are the two values taken that means for n equal to 1 c equal to 5 this c into g of n is about t of n but it should continue to be above only that means you have to check for n equal to 2 also is it continuing it should not come down here it might have come down for some value of n it might have come above for some value of n but if you are trying to say that for a certain value of n it is never coming down it is never falling below t of n then at least you need to check for some 3 to 4 values n equal to 1 n equal to 2 n equal to 3 and n equal to 4 at least keeping c equal to 5 same constant should not get changed you just see because if you are taking this n naught as 1 then here it will be 2 here it will be 3 here it will be 4 so for all values of n from n equal to 1 onwards this c into g of n is about t of n to prove that we are taking now second time n equal to 2 if i take n equal to 2 then here it will be 2 and here it will be 2 how much i will be getting 2 into 2 4 4 plus 3 7 7 less than or equal to 10 yes it is true
so if it is true that means yes then next i'll check for n equal to 3 also if i'm checking for n equal to 3 2 into 3 plus 3 less than or equal to 5 into 3 2 into 3 6 plus 9 9 less than or equal to 15 it is true so c equal to 5 n equal to 3 it is working next time n equal to 4 2 into 4 plus 3 less than or equal to 5 into 4 how much you are getting 2 into 4 8 8 plus 3 11 11 less than or equal to 5 into 4 is 20 this is also true so first time when you took n equal to 1 you got how much 5 less than or equal to 5 then you just see 7 less than or equal to 10 then next 9 less than or equal to 15 11 less than or equal to 20 so 5 7 9 11 yes it is increasing that means it is increasing in a linear manner so we have decided finally that yes for a value of c equal to 5 and n equal to 1 n equal to 1 onwards n equal to 1 onwards c into g of n is above the function t of n so this is what you have to understand the uh, big o notation so here you are going to express yes definitely the time complexity of this algorithm which you have which you are writing it as big o of n fine big o of n this is what you are writing now it is a linear behavior you can have one more function to compare with and that function is what that function is about t of n it's not that this can be the only function that can be about t of n you, you have to look into these different functions the lowest is the constant log to the base 2 n n n log to the base n n square n cube fine so above here is what this is a linear okay linear you no problem it may have what any of this because presently your algorithm behavior t of n is here n so anything above this above n may also fall here that means you will have different functions here to compare with this and all of them are above t of n but you are taking only this one because the one which is closest to t of n should only be taken so here in this case for a value of n equal to 1 this case n equal to 1 that means whatever value you got for n that becomes your n naught this is one example you can understand this concept with one more example also suppose if i am giving t of n equal to 100 n plus 5 and g of n is n this is the definition for this big o notation t of n in less than or equal to c into g of n in the example t of n is 100 n plus 5 less than or equal to c into g of n is n now you just try to do because here also we are going to find the upper bound you are learning this topic under the big o notation which refers to the upper bound of an or upper bound running time of an algorithm so upper bound here is what is that you have to prove the function t of n is less than or equal to c into g of n g of n is given t of n is given substitute here now for a value c how much and for a value n how much this equation will hold good that you need to check now use your mathematical knowledge to find out an appropriate value of c see look here once again this uh, idea may help you here you have 100 and here you have 5 so 105 is there towards your left hand side if you want to make it equal to the right hand side then c value if you take 105 and n equal to 1 then you will get exactly 105 equal to 105 so you don't have to start with c equal to 1 you just check here the constants and then come out with an appropriate value if not for the first time if you are getting the c value correctly you may be uh, writing a value which is quite nearer to this if it doesn't work then you go either by decreasing or increasing the value for c so n equal to 1 100 into n is 1 c is 105 1 then how much you got 105 equal to 105 condition is true now at this point itself you cannot decide that c into g of n is about t of n for n equal to 1 n equal to 1 onwards you have to check so that means what you have to do is you have to check whether for n equal to 2 n equal to 3 n equal to 4 c keeping as 105 only are you getting c into g of n above t of n so what is that you will be doing now you will change the value for 
now you got this one for a value of 2 205 less than or equal to how much your 210 yes this is true then take n equal to 3 100 into 3 plus 5 less than or equal to 105 into 3 how much you are getting this is 305 less than or equal to 315 are you able to get the idea now how to decide the value for c and till what values of n you need to check see in this two examples we found that n equal to 1 onwards the equation is true sometimes what will happen for few examples n equal to 1 may not work that time you have to change it to n equal to 2 and try then once you see that n equal to 2 is working fine then check for n equal to 3 n equal to 4 n equal to 5 some 3 to 4 values continuously so whether uh, for all these values your uh, function is about e of n then that means you are going in the right way so this way you have to carry out now check for definitely for n equal to 4 also it will work 405 less than or equal to 420 and in order to understand this big O notation you have to first write the definition and then draw this sketch also wherein you are trying to show where exactly is this t of n and where exactly is this c into g of n line so in big O notation always remember c into g of n will always be above this t of n and given any example to find the upper bound you have to follow these steps so hope this session is clear to you all for the big O notation and in the next session I shall explain you about the omega notation. So if you find this session useful please like share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you bye bye and take care.